cool features within Call of Duty World War II and a lot of things that a lot of people are definitely going to be looking forward to come the beta whenever it is available to the public and of course the full release for Call of Duty World War II as well. But in this one, I want to take a look at something that I've yet to really touch too much on here on the channel, but something that is definitely going to affect how people play the game, how they want to go for different streaks and all that kind of stuff. So I want to detail here within this one the full list of streaks that we had available to us at E3 for our time with the hands-on experience of Call of Duty World War II's multiplayer. So available to us was 12 streaks. I don't know if there's going to be more, more than likely never going to be less here than that, but we had 12 streaks available to us ranging from different scores, obviously, and definitely some that I think are more useful than others. There is no support package or anything like that, no specialist package, just straight up 12 score streaks ranging from a UAV to essentially what a chopper gunner would have been in Modern Warfare 2. Now, as of right now, as with Advanced Warfare's last score streak system, you could upgrade and do different variations of streaks, but right now there's nothing hinting towards that at all. It's just these base streaks. So with that said, let's jump right into the streaks. Firstly, we're gonna start out with the lowest tier, that being the recon aircraft, which is only 400 points, and that is essentially your UAV. Pretty straightforward and simple with that one. Then there is the counter recon aircraft, which is 425 points, and that is a counter UAV. Then is followed by the flamethrower, which is 500 points, and you've seen that in some gameplay as well. And it's just that, a flamethrower that you can end up keeping upon death even. So if you have it out and you die, but you still have, say, half of it left, you can still use that half at any point in time during the match. Or if it's in a round based, I don't know if it carries over between round to round. I would imagine so, but I'm not entirely certain on that one. But regardless, you still get to keep the flamethrower after you die even. Then next is the fighter pilot, which is 525 points, which is a strafing run as an incoming plane, very similar to the Warthog, but player controlled, not AI controlled, and it's only one pass. Then after that is the care package, which is 550 points. That's just their standard care package. But the cool part is it's dropped in via parachute. So they're considering the cool ways that they're dropped in. We had in advanced warfare via satellite. We had cargo plane in Black Ops 3. And now this where it's dropped in via parachute. Then we have the glide bomb, which is 650 points, which is a remote controlled bomb. And this is something that we saw this in the trailer where it drops from the plane and takes out that bunker. And you can actually control this bomb. It's very similar to the Predator missile, perhaps just even a recent skin of the Predator missile, but it's something where you can control where it ends up going. So that's something that if you use it, take that into consideration. Next is the Mortar Strike, which is 750 points, and you can mark three locations for this. Very similar to me, in my mind, like the Lightning Strike in that fashion. Then is the Artillery Barrage, which is 850 points, which is an artillery barrage on the location that you choose. And the best description that I can think about this is the artillery from World at War, in which it's constant and creates that shell shock feeling. Getting closer to the end of the streak list and getting to the higher score streaks, we then have the Flak Guns, which are 950 points and destroy all enemy aerial score streaks and block enemies from using new ones. So very similar to an EMP in that sense. It doesn't mess with your HUD or anything like that, but it does create the inability to use any aerial streaks. So definitely very useful and a nice little way to keep that EMP, if you want to put it, grounded in something towards the World War II fashion. Then is the Paratroopers, which is 1,000 points and calls in support squad mate. We saw these once again in the trailer as well. Three troopers that drop in via parachute. Cool feature. I personally didn't get to play around with these or get hands-on experience with them to see how useful they are or how long they last, but we'll see with that in time. Next then is followed by the Carpent Bombing, which is 1,200 points, and it's a stealth bomber, but it makes multiple passes over the enemy territory, and the key part being multiple passes. Whether that's something where it's two to three passes and makes it like a Warthog, but with huge bombs, I guess we'll see. Once again, I didn't get to play around with this one all that much, or any of the other higher streaks for that matter as well, simply because we didn't get all that much hands-on experience and time to play with it. But then the final streak that we had debuted to us here at this E3 gameplay capture event was the Ball Turret Gunner, which is 1400 points and you get to control a turret of a b17g and very much so it seems like to me that it'll be like the helicopter the apache from modern warfare 2 and all the other streaks like that that have followed in call of duties previously so definitely one to keep your eye out for and one that maybe you want a gun for no pun intended but definitely something that is very powerful very useful but of course will cost you a lot of score here with this so that though is the full list of everything that we had in terms of score streaks for e3's world war 2 gameplay debut hands-on experience whatever you want to put it here with this one out in LA that was all we had 12 streaks that were available to us you can pick three of them at a time as per usual and as per other Call of Duty titles that we've seen in the past but 
As for much else, once again, we don't know if there's going to be too many more added in on top of later. 12 streaks is a decent amount, but of course there is perhaps a lot more room for more. I guess we'll see in time though. We're right around usually that 14 to 15, I think, off the top of my head in terms of streaks for overall and everything added in at the very end. So we might have a few here withheld from this and that would not surprise me in the least bit, but we'll see where this goes in time and something that once again, as the beta comes out and then of course the full release, we'll see for sure as that time does pass. So that said, hopefully you guys enjoyed. Hopefully this gave some clarity here on the kill streak and score streak system within Call of Duty World War 2 and some of the stuff you can look forward to gunning down some noobs with once you end up hopping in game but let me know your thoughts down there in the comment section down below which one are you looking forward to the most and maybe which ones aren't you looking forward to whatever it may be feel free to drop it down there but if you guys did enjoy the video make sure you drop a like down below if you guys are new to the channel make sure you guys subscribe to stay up to date with everything we have here regarding Call of Duty World War 2 zombies chronicles zombies in general black ops 3 multiplayer modern warfare mastered all that good stuff we got you covered here up on the channel and finally if you guys want to follow me over on Twitter that's the best place to get connected with me outside of YouTube, but practically live on Twitter. So if you guys want to strike up a conversation, ask me a question, whatever it may be, link is down there in the description below. But all that said, now the way, hopefully you guys had a fantastic day. Thanks so much for watching. My name is Nicole Espresso. Take care and peace.